Crew 11 has arrived at the Kennedy Space Center, but why arrive five days before launch? Why is Mike Fink flying Dragon instead of Starliner? And why is Zena Cardman the last NASA astronaut from her class to fly to space? Spoiler alert, two of these questions are answered by Boeing Starliner. The astronauts touch down at the 15,000 foot long shuttle landing facility in preparation for their scheduled launch on Thursday, marking the beginning of an intensive pre-launch phase filled with important activities to ensure a successful mission. The crew's arrival several days before the launch is a standard procedure designed to allow sufficient time for final preparations. Even before arrival, the Crew 11 astronauts entered a pre-flight quarantine, which protects both the crew and the astronauts already on the ISS from any potential illnesses. They'll be living life at the operations and check its building, which in addition to being a building where payloads are checked, is the astronauts' temporary residence prior to launch. Remember those iconic shots of Apollo and shuttle astronauts walking out into the astrovan? That took place right here, and on Thursday, Crew 11 will be recreating those images by walking out into their SpaceX Teslas. Over the next few days, the crew will engage in a series of meticulously planned activities, including a dry dress rehearsal. This involves doing everything they'll do on launch day, from waking up, getting suited and booted in their futuristic SpaceX spacesuits, to driving out to the launch pad, to getting on board the rocket. The only thing that they don't do is put any fuel in the rocket. The rocket is fueled, however, on a different occasion, which is the static fire test. Typically, SpaceX only conducts this testing with Falcon 9 boosters before their first ever flight at the McGregor test facility, or prior to a big important mission. Think super expensive flagship science probes or of course a human crew. So who actually are the crew flying as Crew 11? First there's the sole cosmonaut, Russia's Oleg Platonov. Crew 11 will be his first flight into space, having been selected in the 2018 Roscosmos cosmonaut group. Prior to that he served as a lieutenant colonel in the Russian Air Force. He's part of the crew due to NASA's bartering agreement with Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, to trade seats on Dragon for seats on Soyuz. That way it ensures there's always an American and a Russian on station at all times. The the other mission specialist for this mission is Japan's Kamiya Yui. He has nearly five months of spaceflight under his belt, having lived on the International Space Station during the Soyuz TMA-17M mission in 2015. Once he arrives on station, he will meet fellow Japanese astronaut Takuya Onishi, who's part of the Crew-10 crew. Piloting Crew Dragon is NASA's Mike Fink. He's a spaceflight veteran with over a year of cumulative time in space across two Soyuz and one shuttle missions. Over the past few years, Mike has been instrumental in the development of the commercial crew program, focusing on Boeing Starliner. He was originally supposed to fly aboard the crew flight test. Remember the mission last year, which departed without Butch and Sonny? Because of a number of delays with the Starliner program, NASA decided to select him to fly on a SpaceX Dragon instead. But I'm very proud of, of our teams, both SpaceX and Boeing uh, to uh, to what they've what we've built together, and uh, I'm really proud to actually finally fly on a commercial crew uh, spacecraft. Uh, I'm looking forward. There's a good possibility for a Starliner to be on board at the same time as us. And the fourth crew member is the second rookie, NASA's Zena Cardman. Selected in 2017 as part of the astronaut class nicknamed the Turtles, she was originally scheduled to command Crew 9. However, because of that aforementioned schedule hiccup with the Starliner crew flight test, that mission had to fly with two empty seats to bring Butch and Sunny home. Therefore, NASA reassigned her to this later flight. It's such a journey and I think Although, of course, for Crew 9, I had many hopes. The only thing that mattered was getting the crew home safely, and I think we all did our part together to make that happen. As you may have already seen, Crew Dragon Endeavour is waiting in the hangar at Launch Complex 39A and the Transporter Erector rolled back last week for the integration of the Falcon 9 rocket. Liftoff is scheduled for 16.09 Universal Time on Thursday, so be sure to tune into our live launch coverage starting at T-4 hours. I've been Ryan Caden for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.